Welcome to the Lend Academy podcast, episode number 168. This is your host, Peter Renton, founder of Lend Academy and co-founder of Lend at Fintech. Today's show is sponsored by Lendit Fintech USA 2019, the world's leading event in financial services innovation. It's coming up on April 8th and 9th, 2019 at Moscone West in San Francisco. We've recently opened registration as well as speaker applications. You can find out more by going to lendit.com slash USA. Today on the show, I'm delighted to welcome Matt Humphrey. He is the CEO and co-founder of Lending Home. Now, Lending Home are a fascinating company. They have, in a very short amount of time, become the largest fix and flip lender. They've done over $3 billion as of this recording. And we talk about how they're able to do that, how they're able to go into this space that was really dominated by, you know, small hard money lenders and, and create an online process that's efficient. We talk quite a bit about the technology they've been able to develop. We talk a, a lot about how they differentiate themselves from the other players in the space. We talk about the loans themselves. We talk about the investing side of their business and much more. It was a fascinating interview. I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the podcast, Matt. Thanks for having me, Peter. Okay, so I like to get these things started by you know, giving the listeners a little bit of background about yourself. Maybe you can tell us what you did before you started Lending Home. Sure. So I guess you could say I'm a multi-time tech entrepreneur. This is, depending on how you count, I think company number eight <laughs> since 2004. Uh, every time in different spaces, everything from 3D virtual worlds to content delivery to social games, e-commerce, lending, and more. You know, I'm classically trained as an engineer. I love uh, attacking problems no matter where they may be, where tech can really truly create an advantage. That was my upbringing. I was Carnegie Mellon, computer science. Long story short, I actually started there when I was 13 years old. I was that guy and uh, (laughs) basically finished my core computer science requirements by 18. And then I didn't have a minor. So I went and got an MBA, caught the startup bug, uh, and then started building companies. So I moved out West from Pittsburgh, where I grew up and went to school in 2007, uh, and then built a variety of things from there. So my last company was a company called Home Run. It was an e-commerce platform that we built back in 2010. And actually, we sold it for a very strong uh, outcome only about 18 months after founding, and we, we basically powered an e-commerce platform where we, uh, we sold things to consumers, and we also powered rewards and loyalty and commerce solutions for large card companies and banks like J.P. Morgan Chase and American Express and others. Mm-hmm. So next up after that, after selling it and uh, working with the acquirer for a number of years, uh, I started lending them. Yeah, and it sounds like, you know, looking at your LinkedIn profile, Lending Home is your, is your longest running um, startup, it sounds like. For, it's where you've spent the most time in your career, just on pure, like, pure time-wise. Well, for, for some of those early ones, I got to admit, it wasn't a high bar to spend more than you know, 12 <laughs> to 18 months. Uh, I really think that I took a philosophy of just, you know, start things, learn, rapid pace, rapid prototype, get products to market. And if we're going to succeed, great. And if we're going to fail, let's fail fast, learn and iterate. And so, you know, through those early days of some faster starts and, and stops, learned a lot. I think, you know, a lot of life lessons as an entrepreneur. Home run was a good three year and change run. And, and Lending Home has been now uh, between four and five years. You know, it's been, uh, it's, it, I have to say, though, it is, it is, I am more proud of what we've built here probably than all the past seven plus combined. Right. Just in the, the scale and scope of what we're taking on, the, the technology that we've brought to market, and we've built a real business, which is cool and exciting. Right, right. So let's so let's just talk about the the, the early days of Lending Home. What was the what were you thinking when you you thought you needed you know this you needed to start a you know a mortgage uh, you know, online mortgage origination platform? What was what was what was the thoughts? What was the problem you were trying to solve? Yeah. So. Going back to middle of 2013, I was actually, I having sold Home Run in 2011, I actually was angel investing in a lot of technology startups. 
and taught the bug to also want to think about investing in real estate. And there didn't, it didn't seem like there was a simple, scalable, online, transparent way for investors to access investments in real estate or specifically mortgage. And was intrigued when other companies like Lending Club, uh, Prosper, and, and beyond had brought such straightforward way for an ind- individual investor to invest in personal loans that didn't inv- that didn't exist in mortgage. And so I was actually looking at it from more of that side, and actually got a, got approached to be an LP in a few private mortgage funds covering areas of lending and credit for homes where banks did not. So the fix and flip space that we now find ourselves in, single family rental, you know, foreign nationals, those that are self-employed, lots of verticals that banks didn't cover. And so I actually took a step back and said, would I rather be an LP in a few of these funds or can we actually build technology to do this even better? And then you combine that with uh, some of my close friends and family, uh, even ones with great credit that were having just the hardest time even refinancing loans with their existing bank, taking months, if not quarters, asking them multiple times for their documents over and over again, and consistently getting surprised in the process. And so it led me to be pretty introspective and say, whoa, if this, this, this asset class of mortgage is so big, and both the borrowers and investors have trouble accessing it in a simple, fast, reliable way, what if we did it better with tax? And that's, that's how Lending Home was born. Right, right. And so, and you've, you've obviously, you, you started just a few years ago and you built it up into a pretty sizable scale. I saw just recently your, your press release that came out across $3 billion in, uh, in total originations. So can you just let, give us some context for that? What was, like, how many homes is that? How many loans have you done? That kind of thing. For sure. So yes, uh, about a month ago, we reported that uh, we had crossed about $3 billion in, in cumulative originations. That was, and it was, uh, each billion has come considerably faster than the last. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was around uh, 30 months for the first billion, 11 for the next, and then about eight for the third. And so we're, we're, we're very excited that the business is accelerating and growing so quickly. You know, that breaks down, if you just do some simple math, the average mortgage in the U.S. is slightly over 200K. And so uh, it should be no surprise that that actually equates to now, uh, as, as of the day of this call, we're over 15,000 individual homes that we've lent to. So that's about 200,000 and, and a little bit per loan. We have focused our tech, our process, uh, how we go to market to to be able to lend to the, the, the average homeowner across the U.S. So, you know, whereas I think there's lots of platforms that are focused on, you know, small balance commercial or office buildings or hotels, we're focusing on those single family homes, townhomes, condos, you know, in the Phoenix, Arizona, the Las Vegas, Nevada, those really uh, repeatable, the, the repeatable part of this asset class that is that, that standard average home across the U.S. So, it's been, it's been great. And I think as we focus, the majority of that volume has been uh, focused towards the asset class of, of fix and flip, where our borrowers are buying, oftentimes rehabilitating and reselling homes in their, in their area. And we think this is awesome because this is how communities all across the country stay fresh with this type of financing to enable older, more rundown homes to become new fresh, come back on market and to be available for, for, for homeowners to buy. So that's what we've, that's what we've done. And, you know, at the same time, we've uh, not only have we helped rehabilitate the, the housing stock, we've, we've actually had a lot of borrowers that have gone from, from hobbyists of this to actually building businesses turning homes of this sort. So it's been really rewarding to see. Right. So actually, let's just touch on that a bit because how much of your business is this sort of, one one person doing it as a hobby versus someone who you know is taking out you know five loans and uh, every year kind of thing what is the typical borrower who or who are they yeah so that's that's a great question the across the US uh, when we look at all of the data that we uh, we keep a pretty close eye on we see that about half of this market for 
you know, buying, rehabilitating, and reselling homes, and the financing thereof occurs to folks that are uh, more of repeat borrowers. And that's what we that's what we say internally, just to denote that somebody is doing multiple loans in a given year or two year span. They've sometimes have made this their job. Sometimes this is this has literally become their livelihood, and they 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 build strong businesses on this. And our lending and our our loans enable them to do so. About half of the space is your your kind of uh, your your one off or two off borrower that maybe this is a hobby. And so what we've seen is we've actually seen our business grow on both sides. Hmm. About three quarters of our business today is more of the uh, what we would call pro or repeat audience uh, that has done this many times. And about a quarter of it is that one-off individual loan to a borrower that may be more of one and done, more of the hobbyist right. uh, venue. Right. Uh, but we've seen strong growth across both uh, and across, you know, now across uh, well over half the states in the U.S. Uh, that we're actively licensed and lending into. Okay. Okay. So then... I saw it was I think it was last year you you announced you were going to, you were going to get into traditional mortgages. Is that I haven't heard you mention that yet. Is this, is that sort of initiative on hold or are you in a pilot phase or where are you at with that? Yeah, over the last year we basically uh, have been in a protracted pilot phase. You know, we've uh, we decided earlier this year to really double down and focus on the the, the bridge loans and the fix and flip. That's our bridge is our internal term for fix and flip. Mm-hmm. Because we, we've, we've gone from zero to number one in that market, and we've really decided to double down there. So earlier this year, we paused new originations of the 30-year mortgages to focus on that bridge space. We still have the technology platform built. And we're still uh, actually making progress in that space. Just with rates going up in Q1, Q2, and how much volume and business there is on the bridge side, where the average traditional mortgage company is losing money today, even if we could do better with tech, we still have such margins, such scale potential, uh, and so many customers coming to us asking for help on the bridge side. We defi- decided to kind of truly double down our focus there. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So then, what about yeah, this is this is a primarily, or it has been traditionally an offline process, very paper based, and you know, you're often you know, it sounds like you're often talk- working with just individuals. Tell us about. How you've uh, how you've sort of implemented technology to make this process more efficient, and what have you, you know, what have you done to really, yeah, to to, to make to make this a repeatable process? Yeah, so we we actually we have a little bit of a running joke internally of fintech companies sometimes are are fin more fin fin or more tech tech. I think we've struck a really nice balance of both the fin and the tech. Um, mm-hmm. Look, we. Tech technology is at our core, and we say at the end of the day, we win on service. You know, we're we're here to be a customer company that wins on service, enabled and growing through technology, and that is our ethos, and that's our essence, and that's that is our edge. So, what we we internally break down how the tech can add advantage into three camps. We say experience, platform, and marketplace. And I'll start with the first. So, experience. Can somebody who's never gotten a mortgage before find out about us, walk up and answer a few simple questions, see if they qualify, select the perfect product for them, and then finish their application in just minutes where it could take days or weeks with a traditional paper-based lender. There's a lot of technology that has to be built to acquire those customers, to make sure we're asking the right questions, to really run our credit engine in real time, to be able to frankly decision customers literally as they're on our website answering questions, without a human ever uh, having to step in. I'm, I'm pleased to report that actually about 80% of our customers are submitting loans, loan inquiries, and then their full applications before they ever talk to a human on lending home side. And that's validation to us that, you know, where other lenders have to talk to maybe 10 or 20 customers for every one that closes, we, we do much better than that. And we put the power and the control in the customer's hands. So they can, they can run their process the way they want to. So that's, that's part of how we're differentiating on the experience side. When it comes to platform, the average, I don't know if you track this stat, it's, it's truthfully a little bit crazy. The average cost to close a residential mortgage loan has gone up just about every quarter for the last 20 and is now around $9,000 a loan. Wow. So if, we, if we, we pause on that for a second, 
Average loan in the U.S., $200,000. Average cost to close it, $9,000. That borrower is charged about 4.5% in higher fees, rates, hidden charges by traditional lenders just to pay their expenses, to pay their bills. That's Mm -hmm. before their profit. And that's actually why in Q1, the Mortgage Bankers Association released the stat that the average independent mortgage company was losing money per transaction. That's crazy. And so we've been able to actually create through a significant amount of automation of the underwriting process. We've been able to create a process that we make thousands of dollars per transaction and have a really, really, really good business that's on a per unit basis, makes strong margins. Mm -hmm. That then puts both money in our pocket that we can reinvest back into more tech to keep accelerating that lead or it actually allows us to, to charge less fees to our borrowers and save their money. Right. So that's, that platform is all about automation of the process, pulling in data automatically, and not having to you know, have 20 or 30 humans triple, quadruple, quintuple check, checking each other. That's our, that's our edge with tech. And then the third is marketplace. You know, we, we have a wide array of investors who buy our loans. And so our marketplace allows us to find within days of closing that mortgage allows us to find the perfect place to sell that loan, whether that's large institutions and banks, whether that's a credit fund that, uh, that we've launched, whether that's our peer to peer platform. And so that efficiency lets us not have to accrue loans for months or quarters or years, but actually sell them off within days of close. And it lets us be hyper efficient with our capital. So it really tech is from end to end experience, platform, marketplace. Uh, and that's, that's what we build every single day here at Lending Home. And then so is, is, I'm curious about mobile because um, are you doing, I mean, is a, a some of your, or what percentage, I imagine some are, coming to your site through the mobile, through the mobile device? And how, how are you optimizing for that? Yeah, so we, I believe the last time we checked, new customers that were coming at the top of the funnel was about 50 50 which even even let's say four years ago when we started lending uh those numbers have increased steadily and you might think hey this is this is a mortgage this is the most important financial transaction that most customers are ever going to make and and it's, it's stressful and people are dug in for a hard process but people are still, they want to, they want to inquire on the phone. They want to see if they qualify. That's where they're, that's where they're figuring out the first steps of the process. And so basically we don't, we haven't launched an app as you would traditionally think of a, an iPhone app or an Android app. But what we've done is that every part of our site from learning about us to seeing if they qualify to that entire experience with their application when they're on their phone, it's optimized for mobile. So they can go through the entire experience right there. And even with some of their documents, for instance, if they're going through their application on their phone, they can take a picture of them, have them in the photo album, and seamlessly upload them right through their uh, mobile web browser right into our hands so that we can verify those docs. So we don't have apps, so to speak, but we take advantage of it, and it's super important. It's a high percentage today. Right. Right, makes sense. So you know, you've got you've got the scale, you've got the technology, but is there how, like when you look at the marketplace, there's obviously many people doing fix and flips. There's many many offline, you know, successful offline lenders that are doing fix and flips, and you now have a you know quite a few in, in the online space. So how how do you differentiate yourself? Is it really your tech and your scale, or is there something else? Yeah. So the when we look at the competition, I would say there's a, there's, a number of, there's a number of ways we look different, and there's a number of ways that we have an edge. So I would say that the, the first is, compared to most of our more offline or traditional counterparts, borrowers think of us as effectively having a national presence, right? Mm-hmm. We don't have to have local salespeople in every city that we operate in. Borrowers literally anywhere can walk up uh, and apply for a loan at any given time. And we, and we do most of our customer acquisition through online channels. And so this actually just vastly reduces the overhead and the physical people in each location that we need to scale our business. So that's thing one. Uh, I would say thing two is really, really driving down those operational costs, right? When, when, 
you know, when a borrower is, let's say, on their second, third, fourth, fifth loan, that application is only taking minutes. We're able to approve within days. And sometimes those borrowers are able to close the same week. That's really impressive level of service. But even though they might, you know, be traditionally going to their, their local country club lender who makes the process really easy for them because it's done over a handshake, they get the certainty and scale of working with a national scale player like us but they get that same efficiency. We, have, we even have some of our largest borrowers that used to have in-house staff just to manage disparate loan processes with lots of different lenders that were paper and faxes, et cetera. And when they found Lending Home, they realized, wow, I don't even need that. All my information is saved. This is super easy. And especially once I'm repeating, it's a breeze. And mm-hmm. so I think we, the service aspect is hugely important to it. And then I would say between the operational automation that drives down our costs and our low cost of capital out in the capital markets, because we've had such strong loan performance, you know, this is not 2013, 2014 all over again, where the, the country club loans at 12 to 15 percent and two to five points. This is, you know, nine, 10 percent and maybe, you know, one and a half, two points up front and you know, rates and fees and terms that really work for borrowers and really perform for our investors. So cost of capital, cost of operation, national scale presence, and tech-enabled service, multiple things in there that we think our, our competition is not set up to really compete with. Right, right. Okay, so let's just, I just want to ask again about the the loans themselves, you, you, you mentioned your nine, ten percent, or whatever. But what, what is the range of, of the loans that you offer? And may, and then let's talk about LTV and the length of, of the loan term. Just tell us about the loans. Yeah, so the loans are going to end up being uh, most of these bridge loans are one year loans. So this is this is generally the right duration to cover the acquisition of the property, the rehabilitation, and the resale. Oftentimes, the loans tend to last between seven and 10 months. Mm-hmm. Um, the borrowers can actually pay them off with no prepayment penalty, but they're one-year they're one year based loans to begin with. We lend anywhere between as low as $75,000 and as high as $2 million. Uh, they're interest only. And the ranges of those rates will be anywhere from 7.5% on the low end up to 12 or 13% on the high end. And so... They are compared to some of the anecdotes that I just gave you of where the where the market has been. They're they're nicely and competitively priced to borrowers. Now you also touched upon restrictions like LTV and leverage and things of that sort. You know we we take a view, uh, and this is informed by now having 15,000 units and lots of credit cycles to look at of of full repayments of loans, where we want to make sure that both. Given their level of experience, does the borrower have enough skin in the game up front? And do they have enough cushion on the back end with what this home is going to be worth when they go to resell it? Mm-hmm. The typical loan for us will look like, let's say, between 80 to 90% of the purchase price of the home. But then we also want to check to make sure that it's maybe 65 to 75% of the after repair value. So if we're going to disperse some loan, some money up front to help them t- buy the home and then give them some of the dollars to rehab the home itself, we want to make sure that those combined proceeds are still only, let's say, at most three quarters of the value of the home when they go to resell that. That's going to give us comfort that the upfront loan, as well as all the way through that project, we have significant coverage were anything to go wrong. And look, a, a, a very small percentage of the time, things do, uh, but we've had fantastic performance because I think we kept our, our parameters really thoughtful and make our borrowers, uh, we, we make loans that perform. Right. Well, when, when they do go wrong, I mean, obviously you've got the, you, you really have this asset backing the loan. Like how, maybe just give us some idea of, you know, uh, any like any principal loss or how, how this has played out. Because you obviously, you know, this is a one-year loan. You've been doing this for four and a half years. You've you've had um, many cycles of, of, of a loan book. And what have you seen when it comes to those non-performing loans? Yeah, so just high-level stats to start start you out there. We've, we've returned about $1.6 billion in principal to investors uh, and about uh, 133 million of interest 
And so we've had about 1.8 billion overall in full repayments. Mm -hmm. So again, as you mentioned, we've we've seen, you know, not not our, not our first rodeo doing this, and we we start to get a pretty good feel for uh, how these loans work and perform. Basically, when a when a loan when we feel that even a loan is with at risk of potentially not repaying or the home not being resold, we actually proactively are reaching out to that borrower well before maturity. We realized early on that we could originate amazing loans and have this great platform and help borrowers in the front end. But if we didn't actually also launch a servicing platform, we weren't going to be truly best in class and win this space. And that's mm -hmm. our goal. Right. And so a couple of years ago, we actually brought servicing in-house, which allows us to do these proactive reach outs like, you know, at months 9, 10, 11, reaching out to the borrowers. If something, if they need, let's say, an extension, but you know, we, the, the home is listed, it's just not fully sold yet, we can make those within certain bounds. And then should the borrower actually not pay and not be able to, to exit the loan, our data and analytics team in concert with our risk teams are running all the analyses of the market, the home, the state it's in, other purchase and sales that have occurred recently to give us the best analytics of what to do with it. So that investor who technically holds the risk is generally coming back to us saying, hey, what do you recommend we do with this asset? And uh, in almost every case, we're able to get uh, full principal and interest repaid. We don't talk specifics on those credit performance numbers, but our investors have been extremely pleased with that performance to date. And it's, it's exciting to see. Okay, so on the investor side then, you know, my understanding is that you, you, you fund these loans off your own balance sheet and then sort of sell them to the marketplace just for the, you know, for the ease of use, just for the user experience more than anything, I guess. But uh, tell us about the, the, the typical investors you have. I know you started off, you were 100% institutional and you opened up to retail. I mean, that was one or two years ago now. So tell us a little bit about that. What, what's the breakdown between the two and the, the kinds of investors you have? Yeah, so we, we, three main camps of our investors, we would say our marketplace platform or basically the, the P2P platform. Second is our institutional investors. And third is we actually launched a, a second iteration uh, in October of 2017 was when we announced it of a mortgage opportunity fund. It's a credit fund uh, that we actually launched and managed in-house dedicated to just buying our loan. So today, the platform looks about 15% peer-to-peer, mm -hmm. about 30% towards the fund, and about 55% institutional. And that's a good balance of where we, we actually enjoy keeping that, that, that mix uh, with all of those channels growing proportionally as we scale. And so for going one by one there, the marketplace platform is essentially any accredited peer-to-peer -peer investor can walk up, can prove they're accredited, can connect their bank account and launch assets onto our platform, and then either select individual loans they'd like to invest in, or use our simple auto-invest algorithm that dials up or down their risk-reward ratio that they want to get them the return that they'd like. So at this point, hundreds of millions of capital on that platform, and we're seeing great retention that, you know, some investors, as soon as they start to get those first repayments, they put in more, uh, and, and, and many at that, at that six, nine, 12 month mark, when those first loans start to fully repay, they get it, they see the fruits of uh, our grid credit work, and they, and they, they, they re-up with, with sizable reinvestment. So that, that platform growing, and, and, and we're very excited about it. The fund, which was, again, a, a dedicated opportunity fund for mortgage, uh, was launched in October of 2017. We, um, we raised about $100 million of equity, and we have a credit facility against it of up to $300 million of debt. And so that fund earns our, our, our LPs in that fund uh, strong returns, north of 10%, um, and can hold up to $400 million in assets in a given time. And then the last is institutions. And as you, I think you hit the nail on the head there, when we started, we were pretty much asking just about anybody who will buy our loans. You know, if you go all the way back to 2014, starting off much more in fast money, hedge funds, private equity, uh, folks that really needed a, a north of 10% unlevered return. And as we've proven that credit and proven that scale, we've really normalized this asset class and we've been able to expand that to you know, to asset managers, 
uh, specialty mortgage funds, and in conversations with, with pensions and insurers now to even broaden that mix further. So diversified channels, diversified investor base, uh, and very exciting overall. Right. Okay. Well, we're just about out of time, but you know, I can hear the passion in your voice and you, and you really are excited about what you're doing here then. So but what is your, what is your vision? What is the, what, what's the future for lending home? Is this, are you going to be the, you know, the, the largest mortgage lender in the, in the country or what's, what, what are you, what are your plans? Yeah. So in the, in the near term, we are focused heads down, growing and scaling the business. If you just look at our first product in fix and flip, you know, we've, we've become number one in that, in that market from a standing start in between three and four years. And we can have just on that first product, we can have a highly profitable, highly scalable business. And the near term focus is to go even deeper towards that. I think as we do that, we're going to continue building out the best map mortgage platform in the world. And that could be a platform that supports, you know, bridge loans loans of adjacent products or all the way to, you know, 30 year mortgages. And that, that platform is diverse enough to really allow us to go into any market that we want to, when we want to go into it and be truly the best way to get that mortgage product. And last, you know, um, really it comes down to just that. What is the right expansion of our products over time where we can scale and be one of the most significant mortgage players in the country. So if you've got that experience, that platform, that marketplace, and you really unlock the business with tech and went on service, there's not a lot we can't do. So focused on that. And, you know, as we look out towards other uh, lenders that, 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 that we have admiration for, like the green skies of the world who went public uh, the, earlier this year, the funding circles of the world who are rumored to go public, folks that can leverage tech, efficiently use capital, and help customers where, where banks aren't or partner with banks to do that, can build multi-billion dollar businesses. And that's what we're excited to do. All right. Well, um, good luck to you, Matt. We'll have to leave it there. I really appreciate you coming on the show today. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Okay. Thanks. See ya. Bye. You know, it's interesting to me that Lending Home has decided to double down on one product, the fix and flip product. They, you know, so they announced mortgage as we, as we talked about, but they haven't really done much with it. They're doubling down on fix and flip. And in some ways it goes against, you know, conventional wisdom in the fintech space today that companies need to offer multiple products. So I think Clearly, this is, it's not a one size fits all mentality for having a diversified product. They've decided that they can really build a profitable business in this single vertical. And I think part of the reason is they, you know, they have these borrowers that come and do three, four, five, six loans a year. So the customer acquisition cost is not, it's not like a personal loan where someone might do them once every two or three years. This is, they're, they're able to generate this repeat business in a much quicker fashion. So maybe that's it. And I think there's a lot to be said for focusing on one product if you can build a profitable business around it. And it sounds like that's what they're doing. Anyway, on that note, I will sign off. I very much appreciate you listening and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Today's show is sponsored by Lend It Fintech USA 2019, the world's leading event in financial services innovation. It's coming up on April 8th and 9th, 2019 at Moscone West in San Francisco. We've recently opened registration as well as speaker applications. You can find out more by going to lendit.com slash USA.